This is Laura Sorensen of the LCSR here at Rutgers University. Eclipse is an IDE, which is an integrated development environment. Now all that means is that it's one application that you use to edit, debug, and compile computer programs. It's one-stop shopping, you use it for development, you use it to create your code, and then you create an executable, and you've basically done what you need to do. Some of the advantages of using an IDE is that it makes it easy to put components together, like different pieces of code, icons, other resources you might use, even data, and can make everything one project that's easy to manage. Uh, instead of going to a command line and using the command tools and, and putting everything together that way, a lot of people find it easier to use an IDE. There are some disadvantages to using IDEs. Um, for example, if you were to use graphical programming, um, the IDE makes it easy to just go pick out a dialog box or pick out a frame. Whereas if you were doing that in a raw text editor, you would have to do all of the programming to create dialog boxes and things like that. Um, you can always go look at raw code and figure out how that's done, but people rarely do it. If you came up using something like Visual Basic, you're used to just dragging and dropping components onto a screen, and that's part of the ease that using an IDE brings to you. This presentation assumes that you already have a Java development kit installed on your system. Now, a Java development kit is different than a Java runtime environment. A Java runtime environment, or JRE, is code so you can run Java programs. Eclipse is going to be creating Java programs and creating program code. So you need a development kit, in this case a JDK. You can go to the Sun site, java.sun.com, and download the latest version at this point in time, 1.5, and load the Java JDK on your system. Most systems will want you to have an environment variable that says Java and capital underscore home equal to the place where you put your new Java JDK. We're assuming you have that already. When Eclipse first runs, it will look for a JDK, and if it sees your Java home environment variable, it will use that JDK and everything will work fine. Uh, later, we'll show you how to go to preferences in Eclipse, and if you have multiple JDKs or JREs on your system, we can tell Eclipse to use them for different testing purposes. But for right now, we're assuming you have at least one Java development kit loaded on your system so Eclipse will work. What we're going to do here today is we're going to download Eclipse and we're going to use it as an IDE for Java applications. Now Eclipse is much more than that. Um, Eclipse was created as a programming platform by IBM in the early in 2000 and it's used not only as an IDE but also an integration platform and you can build programs on top of it. You can use it not only for Java but you can also use it for Perl or C++ and there's a whole bunch of things with Eclipse that you can do but basically what we're going to use is a section of it called the JDT, the Java Development Toolkit. Um, it also works with Tomcat which is the uh, Sun approved web container for Java. <laughs> And <laughs> what are you laughing at, sun-approved? Hey, yeah. uh, it also works with Ant, which is basically make for Java. And it also works with JUnit, which is unit testing for your uh, software. Now, there are other IDEs out there, like JBuilder from Borland, and also NetBeans, which comes from Sun. But the way things are going out there, and the more you read about it, Eclipse is slowly but surely becoming the most popular IDE that's used for Java. So what we're going to do right now is go to the website, grab a copy of it, and install it on our computer. Now, downloading and installing Eclipse. The URL for the Eclipse website is http uh, colon slash slash www.eclipse.org. And when you get to that page, you're going to see it says eclipse.org in the upper left-hand corner. And you want to look at the menu in the left and the third selection down will say downloads. Go ahead and click on that and we will go to the download page. Now, once at the download page, you can see at the very top of the page, there's a very large link that says Eclipse SDK, that software development kit, 3.1.1. So if you would go and click on that, that will bring us to yet another page. If there was a later version, yeah, that, I know. that would be the one at the top? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. They, what they usually do is the most popular version of Eclipse will be that large link on the top. Okay. And then if you want to go down and get other versions, they will be listed underneath it. Okay. That was a good question. Good, Q, good Q&A. Whatever. Um, once you get to the download page, 
you need to select a site that you want to download it from, and there's a whole bunch of mirror sites with Eclipse. I usually go to the University of Buffalo because it's closest to us, and their computer science department pretty much keeps the page up to date, and that's where I go. You know, your mileage may vary depending on where you're using this. So go ahead and click on the mirror site of your choosing. And when you do that, you will be presented with the file Eclipse SDK dash version, in this case 3.1.1. Uh, I'm installing it on the Windows platform. Eclipse also works very well on Linux, be it uh, Debian or Fedora, and you can download a TAR or a tar -GZ, anything like that. I'm downloading it for the Windows platform, so I'm grabbing the win32.zip file. Does it work for Macs as well? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. You can go get a version for OS X. Thank you. So you can load Eclipse on a Macintosh now. As a matter of fact, Macs are very useful when it comes to Java because they come with the Java development kit already loaded in OS X, hmm. as well as some other Java development tools. So Java and Macs work very well together. That's, you know, Java, the new Mac operating system is very close to Unix. So <laughs> that's a marriage made in heaven. <laughs> um, what I do usually when I do things on a Windows system is I will have a directory at root called temp, and any time I download software, I put it in my temp directory, and then when I do the install, I will place it wherever I am going to place it. So when I do the download from the mirror site, I will stick it in my temp directory. Then what I do is I go to said temp directory, and I extract the zip file. When I extract the zip file, I will get a setup file to install the software. Now this is how it usually works with other software packages, but Eclipse is different. Eclipse is ready to run out of the box. There's really no install. So what you want to do is unzip the package and then move all of the files that you've unzipped to where you're going to keep them. And what I usually do, being a Windows setup, is I go to Program Files and I create a directory called Eclipse and I move all of the files that I've unzipped and the directories to that directory. Now I do this using uh, Windows Explorer. Basically all I do is I highlight all of the files and I drag and drop. And that should be easy enough. If you don't know how to do that, go grab a Windows book and look at <laughs> drag and drop for our Windows Explorer. Um, as a, What I do as a last step is I will right click on eclipse.exe, which is the executable. I will then go to send to and then desktop. So I create a desktop shortcut for my new version of Eclipse. And then what I will do is I will go ahead and double click that Eclipse icon and if everything has gone according to plan, I will see the splash page for the Eclipse tutorial. And the top will say welcome to Eclipse 3.1, uh, that's the latest version, and you'll see little links to the different tutorials that Eclipse comes with. One is Java development, one is plugin development to make tools that work inside of Eclipse and help you with your projects. Um, another would be SWT applications. Now SWT is a graphical library that Eclipse offers you to build applications. It's different from Swing if you're a Java programmer. Uh, it's different from MFCs if you're a Windows programmer. It's its own graphic library to create panels and frames and containers and scroll bars and all of that neat widget stuff that you learned when you were in school. Well, ostensibly you're in school right now, so you're going to learn all of this now. Um, <laughs> there are a whole, whole bunch of things. Uh, the Eclipse world is vast. We're just you know, using a small part of it for our Java development. So if you've done that, then you've got Eclipse installed in your uh, system and you are ready to roll. Um, one thing I tell people who just install Eclipse is that there are tutorials and help files all over the World Wide Web. All you have to do is go to Google and type in Eclipse Help and hit enter and you will see that there are tons and tons of pages and help sites and tutorials and if you want to try something or if you want to learn how to use this tool, you are not going to want for tutorial sites. Eclipse has it on there. As far as books, some old-fashioned people still like to have the paper in their hand. I happen to be one of them. There are two books that are really the gold standards as far as learning Eclipse is concerned. One is the O'Reilly Eclipse book. It's a purple cover, so it's associated with Java. And the second is the Java Developer's Guide to Eclipse. Now, this was written by the people who developed Eclipse. 
uh, they got together the three main IBM developers and they put their heads together and they wrote a thousand page tome on everything that is Eclipse. Only the first 200 pages speak to Java development. The rest is for plugin development and the SWT and using Eclipse as a CVS, it's everything. So that's really the hardcore uh, Java uh, Eclipse Bible. The O'Reilly Eclipse is more to the point and we'll show you how to use it as a Java IDE. Um, the last thing we usually do is we go and grab an example. So if you are at the tutorial splash page when things started up, uh, all you need to do is hit X in the upper left hand corner of the window where it says welcome and you will get a standard empty view in Eclipse. Now this is usually called a perspective. Instead of calling it a perspective, they should have called it layout, but the word layout is used in so many other places in Java that they probably wanted to avoid it. But the word perspective is basically just the way you see things and the way things are laid out. In my current example, I have the package explorer on the left-hand side of the window, my output window at the base next to it, and then the large window where I'll have code in the middle of the screen. Um, there's also an outline on the right hand side and what that's going to do is show me all of my classes, all of my methods, and all of the things that I'm building inside of my code. You'll see as you get to use Eclipse that it's very thorough. Anything you build, any classes you do, it will be shown to you on the side window and it is very, very complete when it comes to things like that. What we're going to do is put together a quick Hello World application. So you want to hit File and then New and you'll be shown a new project window. In the new project window, just hit the top selection, which says Java Project. Click the Next button, and you'll be given a window that says Create a Java Project. On near project name, just type the word Hello, and then go to the Contents section, and click the box that says, well, it's not a box, it's a button. Click the button that says Create Project from Existing Source, and then put the directory where you want to put the source. In my example, I go C colon backslash my Java backslash hello and that's where I'm going to keep the code for this particular project. Then you can go ahead and click Finish, or actually what I do is I click Next, and get the Java settings. And what that'll do is show you where the source is, and at the bottom for the default output folder, you put Help, the name of your project. Now when you hit Finish, you go ahead and type in the code. You will see on the left-hand side in the Package Explorer, a default package has been created for you, and a default shell has been created for you called hello.java. This is where your code goes. What you want to do is double click on that and you'll see in the middle of the screen a blank page will come up that you're expected to type in the code that will be your hello.java program. Now real quickly for those of you who don't know Java or don't want to type it in, it goes like <laughs> this. Public class hello open bracket public static void main you will learn that because that is the way all main things start in Java it takes a string as an argument, so string, bracket, close bracket, space, args. You can name it anything. You could call it dogs, you could call it Fred. But classically, people call it args, and you'll be able to access that from inside the program if you want to use command line parameters in the future. Then what you do is you open up a bracket and say system.out.println, open paren, and in quotes, whatever you want to print. In our example, hello world end quote, end paren, semicolon, always use a semicolon to end a statement. Then we close the bracket to close the method we've created, in this case main. Then we close the bracket to close the class, in this case class hello. And that is it. That is done. We have written our first program. Now, Eclipse is made so that it builds your code actually as you're typing it. Now you can change that by going to project preferences and uh, unclick the what's clicked that says build automatically. Now I usually do that but uh, right now, odd as it may seem, after you've finished typing in your program, it's already been compiled and is ready to run. But what we do in Eclipse is we will click the arrow button on the top of the toolbar, which on my screen is five buttons in from the left, right next to the little spider button, which is actually a bug for debugging. And when you run that, you'll be given a selection uh, click on Java application and click on hello. Tell it that the project is hello and the main class is hello. You will only have to do this once. When you make any changes to your existing project and run it in the future, it will use this run configuration and do whatever you need it to do. The reason, and you'll like it in the future, 
that you use this run configuration is that Eclipse can set your code up to run on different JREs, with different data sets, with different command line arguments. It's really a great thing to use as far as testing is concerned. You can take the same code and run it four different ways with the 1.4.2 JRE, with the 5 JRE. You can do it with different data sets, different arguments, different class paths to use classes that are the same name but actually different code. It's really a, a great setup and allows you a lot of freedom so that you don't have to set up different programs in five different areas. It allows you to set up the run configuration so you can really test your code and then we could get into more JUnit stuff in the future. But right now, we're going to move on and click the run button at the bottom of our run configuration. And if the programming gods are with us, voila. At the base, it says, hello world. The base is your output. And in this case, we've used a command that prints to the standard out which is, in this case, the console. So if you've been programming for a while, you know standard in, standard out, standard error. This printed to the standard out, which is the console, and it printed hello world. So there we have it. You've installed Eclipse. You've gotten it running. You know where the tutorials are. You know where to get the help. And we've even built our first Java application, Knockwood, that ran fine and printed hello world at the base of your screen. So that is the beginning of using Eclipse, and hopefully we gave you some help along the way. That's the end of the presentation. Everybody have a good day and be good.